Sports. We are Black Mark. We are Wisconsin. This long road trip comes to an end today in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. It has been a bumpy three city trip to say the least for the Brewers but today a chance to beat the Nationals and win the series and go back to Miller Park on a good note. They're getting ready for a weekend set against the now first place Chicago Cubs. The Brewers losing last night while the Cubs beat the crosstown rival White Sox. So a half game separating those teams. Michael Blazik. After 10 starts at Triple A, gets his first big league start here today for the Milwaukee Brewers, and he has quite a draw here today, facing last year's Cy Young winner, Max Scherzer, who's making a strong push to be this year's Cy Young winner as well. Hello from Nationals Park alongside Bill Schroeder. I'm Matt LaPay. Sophia Minert is our reporter. Well, Clayton Kershaw putting together a great year. Obviously, he is on the shelf for the time being. The Rock, Max Scherzer, coming off a Cy Young winning season last year and you can make a strong argument he's been even better at least to this point this year. Yeah these is this is one of these guys that moves the needle. I mean he brings people to the ballpark and when you're facing Max Scherzer especially with a young team like the Brewers I mean you get up for games like this. I mean there's nobody better one of the better right handers in all of baseball two times Cy Young Award winner eight more strikeouts. And he'll have 200 for the sixth consecutive year. This guy has all the pitches. You figure the Brewers better be aggressive in the count because he doesn't walk anybody. He strikes out a lot of batters. So the deeper into the count the Brewers allow him to get, the tougher he becomes. This is going to be a good test for this young Brewers offense. Scherzer will give up the big fly, and the Brewers know how to hit the big fly. We'll see if they have a few in them here today as the Brewers and Nats wrap up the road trip with a crew. First pitch coming up. The temperatures will climb into the mid to upper 80s as Max Scherzer ready to go to work. First pitch is a ball, and we are underway at Nationals Park as Eric Sogard, he 
And Jonathan VR playing tag team here lately, but both in the lineup here today. We'll set you that lineup here momentarily as Scherzer evens the count on a fastball one and one. Well, numbers jump off the page at you. I mean, 11 and 5, 226 earned run average. That ERA second to Clayton Kershaw in the National League. I mean, first in strikeouts, first in opponent batting average. So the Brewers certainly have the work cut out for them today. His numbers even better than last year when he won his second Cy Young Award. Sogard in his first week back off the disabled list with the ankle injury. In the lineup every other day beginning last weekend in Philadelphia. As he gets the call here against Serger, Serger, Scherzer, excuse me, I'll wake up. Max Scherzer, it's not that difficult. Been it is for a while. It is early. <laughs> it is early. Just very early. Breakfast. That's right. right. <laughs> so guard at short today. Jonathan Villar at second. 2 2 pitch to the first batter of the day. A fastball missing and a full count to Eric Sogard. Hey, Craig Council has every one of his left handed batters in the lineup here today, and that's a good thing because of that wipeout slider that Max Scherzer possesses. Well, he's trying to snap back Led most of the way last night, but a big eighth inning for the Nationals, the difference, and that was a swing and a miss. So Change for the first out of the day. Let's check out the Brewers batting order presented by Potawatomi. Eric Thames will hit second, Domingo Santana third. Travis Shaw hitting cleanup, followed by Ernan Perez. He is in left for Ryan Braun today. Jonathan VR. Lewis Brinson in his first home run last night. Jet Bandy hits eighth. Michael Blazik rounding out the Brewers batting order here today. Here's Eric Thames back in the lineup. Here today, he gave way to Jesus Aguilar last night against the left handed starter Gio Gonzalez. Council's team had a very good pitching performance from Jimmy Nelson last night, but the Nationals' offense finally broke through and broke through in a big way a seven run eighth inning last night. And Brewers had a two to one lead going into the bottom of the eighth inning. That evaporated quickly. The Brewers started to make it really interesting in the top of the ninth, scoring three times. They were one hitter away from bringing the tying run to the plate. And Sean Doolittle was able to get back to back strikeouts of Jonathan Villar and Domingo Santana. And the Nationals were able to secure that eight to five win. It was a good pitching duel between Gonzalez and Jimmy Nelson. Two balls, two strikes to Eric Thames. Yeah, the Brewers have had two very good starts in this series. Zach Davies, Jimmy last night. They just weren't able to hold on. Bullpen had has had a couple of meltdowns on his road trip. There's Thames sending one into left center field on the run. Adam Lind, and he will get there, grinding away out in left field for out number two. Well, he's made all the plays out there. He started all three games. Just check out the rest of the Menards defense for the Nationals. You saw Adam Lynn with a pretty nice catch out there in the gap in left center. Goodwin Harper in the outfield. Rendon, Defo Murphy, Zimmerman from third to first, and Jose Lobaton behind home plate. Matt Wieters gets today off. Rusty Baker pretty much going with the same lineup, the uh, strongest lineup he has available. They have a number of injuries. We've talked about it during the course of this series. Domingo Santana settles in. He began his nights last evening in a very impressive way, launching a long home run over the left field bleachers. Brewers scoring twice in the first inning. Fortunately, they were quiet the rest of the way until the ninth. Scherzer is rock benching, given us that strikeout total, closing in on 200 already, and we're not even through the month of July. Two losing decisions against the Brew Crew last year, including a one to nothing loss to Junior Guerra right here in. Washington on 4th of July last year. 
He's pitched well, but he's lost his last two against Milwaukee. Gave up three home runs in the two outings against the Brewers a year ago. It was a mix and match lineup, especially at Miller Park. The outfield trio, that June matchup in Milwaukee against Scherzer, was made up of Kirk Neuenheis, Alex Presley, and Ramon Flores. Neuenheis took Scherzer deep. We mentioned that because the Brewers mixing and matching a, a little bit here this afternoon with Braun out of the lineup. And Jet Bandy behind the plate. He and Pena tag team it. Pena and gets a little more time, but. And Arcia not in the starting lineup today. Council's team wrapping up this 10 game road trip. And it has been a rugged one. And through it all, they are still in the thick of it, a half game behind the Cubs, and they will see the Cubs at Miller Park this weekend. Swing and a miss on a changeup and a couple of strikeouts in this first inning for Max Scherzer as the Brewers go down in order. We'll see what Blazik has in store today in D.C. Brewers baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Miller Lights, the original light beer. By Hupie and Abraham, voted best, rated best. Hupie and Abraham, tell them you mean business. And by Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Brewers go down in order at the top of the first inning. Couple of strikeouts already for Max Scherzer. Milwaukee Brewers baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Let the games begin. Let's check out the Nationals batting order presented by Potawatomi. Brian Goodman, Wilmer Defoe, Bryce Harper, one, two, three. Ryan Zimmerman hits cleanup, followed by Daniel Murphy and Anthony Rendon. Anthony Lind, or Adam Lind, excuse me, hitting seventh. Jose Lobatone eighth. Scherzer rounding out the batting order against Michael Blazik, getting his first big league start. A sizable stage he is on going up against Scherzer. Yeah, four appearances with the Brewers this year. Second stint with Milwaukee has not allowed a run. Made 10 starts down in AAA. Last nine were starts, and you know, last time he made a start was a good one. But that was a month ago. That was June 28th, seven and two thirds, no runs, and really no restrictions on Blazik here today, according to his pitching coach. See how long he can go. Ryan Goodwin, a big part of that eighth inning last night. He had punched out his first three at bats and was able to bounce a double over the glove of Jesus Aguilar. That was one of several key hits in that inning. And the leadoff walk in that eighth got it started. It was the last hitter that Jimmy Nelson faced. And then, as Rock mentioned, the bullpen. Knocked around a bit, Jacob Barnes and Jared Hughes specifically, although Josh Hader came in and 
at the time got a monster strikeout with the go ahead run at third. He was able to punch out Bryce Harper. Harper who chirped after the first strike call went against him. Had a meltdown of his own after the at bat. That was a big moment for Hader in an otherwise very, very tough inning. Yeah, that was an interesting at bat, but you now all is forgotten. Bryce Harper back in the starting lineup. Goodwin sends one out to left field, hit it well on the run. It goes over the head of Hernan Perez. And Goodwin begins the home half of the first with a double. And that ball carried pretty well out there in left field. It looked like he was a little bit off balance on the swing, just carrying over the head of Hernan Perez. Check out the swing. I mean, just kind of one hands it, kind of drops the head of the bat on it, just carries out there into left field over the head of Perez for a leadoff double. Well, that eighth inning for the Nationals really brings to light how good Jimmy Nelson was last night and Davies the night before because this is one heck of an offense here in Washington. Yeah, they lead the league in a number of categories. And the Brewers had kept the Nats off the board. Until the seventh inning last night Daniel Murphy with the home run of course Davies with help from Oliver Drake had a shutout on Tuesday night. Wilmer Defoe trying to bunt first base side no play at third to throw over to the covering VR for the out. Yeah, pretty close. Very close. Defoe with like a second opinion there. Good one able to advance to third. And the Nationals are taking a look at it in the clubhouse. Little hesitation. Yeah, he's out. I'm not sure what he's squawking about. <laughs> That's not even close. But a good bunt. Let's check out the defense, the Menards defense from Milwaukee. Perez, Brinson, Santana in the outfield. You got Shaw Sogar getting a started shortstop. No Orlando Arcia. VR Thames on the right. And Jet Bandy gets the day game today here in Washington. There's Bryce Harper with one out and Brian Goodwin the runner at third. Harper enters the game with an 18 game hitting streak. And he turns on one here deep to right field. And it is 2 0 Nationals. Bryce Harper wasting no time today. Home run number 26. And a lot of those home runs that come in the first inning. I mean, the Nationals jump on Blazer quickly. A 2 0 lead. And when you're facing Max Scherzer, obviously, you don't want to fall too far behind. Fastball up, 91 miles an hour, and Bryce Harper knocks it out of here. Last night the Brewers got the early jump. Today it's the Nationals. And he's in the thick of it for the MVP award is Harper, an award he won two years ago. He was really snapped back from a tough year for him in 2016. Ryan Zimmerman at the plate. He had the hit last night that gave the Nats the lead for good in that eighth inning. Two run double. And that was with two outs off of Jared Hughes, who had come into the game to face him. Not a bad pitch either from Hughes. Fastball outside corner went right down the line and right. Swing and a miss. Bandy will secure the strikeout. And there are two men out in the first. Blazing with a fastball. He can reach mid 90s when he reaches back. You figure he's going to try and pace himself a little bit starting today. Curveball slider, and he came up with a changeup down in the minor leagues when he was starting in AAA. We'll face Daniel Murphy. Next to no sample sizes here in Blazing matchups against national. Nationals hitting here today. Murphy last night homered. It was his 17th of the year. Toughest man in the National League to strike out. And he hit a good pitch off of Jimmy Nelson. You know, a little bit off the inside corner last night. 
A one two count knocked it out of the ballpark. He's been tearing it up as a national this the second year for him coming over from the Mets. Goes the other way down the line but this will slice out of play. What do you think you like the noon start. I'm liking it. Especially on getaway day yeah, right. Yeah absolutely. You're a morning guy aren't just you? get up I used to be you're not a night owl and, until I was trying to pronounce Max Scherzer. <laughs> I, I knew I was one cup of coffee short today. Three's a charm. That's right. You got it. <laughs> just slow down. <laughs> yeah get up and go. No. Reminds me of those 11 a.m. football games I'll uh, have coming up. Yeah, they're coming soon. up. Yeah. yeah the actually that uh, game we were talking about with Scherzer losing on fourth of July. I think that was an 11 o'clock start here. In Washington, hey, Eastern Hill breakfast with the Brewers yeah. back home. Or brunch, anyway. And if the Brewers can find a way to get to Scherzer today, it would be a sweet conclusion to a real tough trip. And there's a strikeout there for Blazik. Changeup getting Daniel Murphy. So a couple of strikeouts for Blazik, but. Goes up a two run bomb as Bryce Harper, one of the best in the game, goes deep for the 26th time this year. 2 0 Nationals as we move to the second. Today, two run homer as we move to the second inning at Nationals Park. Four, five, and six for the crew Travis Shaw, Hernan Perez, and Jonathan Villar against Scherzer. Shaw on the edge of 323 homers, a team best 73 RBIs. Had a double last night in the first inning. Stole third and scored a run on a wild pitch. A strikeout wild pitch. Aguilar was able to reach. Shaw scored from third as the curveball bounced up there and got beyond Matt Weeters. Fastball there and Shaw unable to catch up with it. Yep, and then uh, Gio Gonzalez really settled down and uh, Brewers not able to get anything on the board until the ninth inning. National is very strong in their starting rotation. They remain that way even with Steven Strasburg now on the DL as Shaw rifles one foul. Banged off an empty chair, fortunately. Strasburg going on the 10 day DL. He came up with a forearm injury, a forearm issue in his last start on Sunday against the Diamondbacks, lasted just two innings in that game. Yep, a nerve impingement. They didn't think they were going to have to put 
Strasburg on the DL, but they decided to. Why not? It's only 10 days. It's enough to make people around here nervous. This is a team with a very comfortable lead in the East. And getting to the playoffs has been something this ball club has been able to do. Advancing in the playoffs has been another story. And Misty Baker trying to guide his team into a better position to move through. Assuming they get to October, which would seem like a fairly safe assumption right now, as Scherzer issues a walk to Shaw to begin the top of the second. They he didn't walk many either. Scherzer, 34th walk right there to Travis Shaw to go along with 194 punch outs. Well, the standings with the win last night, the Nationals with a 12 and a half game lead. I think the only thing that uh, you know that makes the folks around here in Washington nervous about this team, their bullpen. They did help their bullpen with trading deadline deals. Do little in Madsen, but still, I think not all that comfortable with their bullpen right now. Well, Sean Doolittle came in last night. When you bring a, a closer in in a non-save situation, it's no secret that sometimes they can struggle. The Brewers knocked him around. But then Doolittle did lock down to get strikeouts to end the game. Hernan Perez was a part of that ninth inning rally last night. He had a run scoring double in the ninth inning. Scherzer a strikeout machine. About 12 and a half per nine innings. Strikeouts per nine. His whip better than last year. ERA. Better by more than half a run from last year, in which he won his second Cy Young. Two strike pitch to Perez. Yeah, he ranks high in just about every pitching category on the positive side. Second in ERA, first in opponent batting average, second in innings pitched, and of course leads the league in strikeouts. The only blemish for Scherzer has been the home run ball. He's given up 16. And he gave up 31 last year, which led the National League. He also led the NL in innings pitched. And he's someone who you can count on. Rusty Baker can count on him these days to make every turn a swing and a miss here. And Perez, the strikeout victim number three for Scherzer, one out of the second. Yeah, home runs aren't going to hurt you too bad as long as they're solo shots, but most of the time they are against him. He has allowed only 84 hits coming into his start today in just a little over 139 innings. We face Jonathan VR. His hit in this series was last night to double in the fifth inning off of Gonzalez. Just to work from the left side of the plate where he has been better. Numbers nowhere near what he would want, but he has he's hitting 60 points better from the left side of the plate. He did get a double last night against Gio Gonzalez, the left hander. A rope into the gap in left center. Great counsel and company that keep hoping that he can get his season turned around and we know how good he can be the numbers he put up offensively a year ago for the crew and he shares time out there today he's still at second Eric Sogard is at short Garcia not in the lineup Council trying to guide his team through as they have hit some pretty big bumps on this road trip just two and seven Going into this finale today. 1 1 pitch to VR. And really, the offense has been the culprit on this trip. I mean, starting pitching has been good. The bullpen, as we mentioned, they've had a couple of hiccups. I mean, big hiccups on this road trip, big numbers in a couple of different innings. But for the most part, pitching has been solid. Defense has been very good. Just haven't been able to score a lot of runs. It's been all or nothing. The two wins the Brewers have in the trip. The offense busted out. Putting nine on the board against the Phillies, winning what turned into a slugfest, nine to eight, and then 
Eight nothing a shutout over the Nats on Tuesday night. Long ball return. Brewers hit three of them. Hit a couple last night, but missed some chances as well when they led two nothing. They didn't have a ton of hits in the game, but they were stranding runners in scoring position. It's been a ongoing issue with this Brewers club when they hit those doldrums offensively very home run reliant and yet there's enough power up and down the lineup here until recently the Brewers have been able to really withstand a prolonged dry spell if a couple guys go into a cold spell hitting home runs then they're picked up by two or three others and that's the thing when you rely too heavily on the home run ball every now and again you're going to run into stretches where you're not hitting you have to manufacture runs figure out other ways to get runs on the board runners in scoring position this hasn't happened on this road trip for the most part we are a swing and a miss and four strikeouts already for Max Scherzer two away in the second Here's Lewis Brinson. He came back since the call up and got the rally going last night for the crew. Powerball home run count. First big league home run for Lewis Brinson and he launched it. And no cheapy there, right? He's going to remember that one. That wasn't a wall scraper. Watched him grow a little bit, even last night. You know, Want to make too much of a one night sample size, but against Gonzalez, had that change up going, got Brinson the first at bat last evening, but he was able to grind out a walk in his second plate appearance and then went deep off a of Doolittle in the ninth. Telling reporters that first time up when he debuted against Arizona, you have to guard against trying to hit the five run homer. Mm -hmm. It's just settle down. He's too amped up. Not the way you can play this game. You got to relax. That takes time. And they start feeling comfortable in the batter's box. You stay back. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer for some than others. With up huge numbers at Colorado Springs. In fact, after his brief stint with the Brewers, sent back down to Triple A. Brinson hit better than 400. Now he's facing a pitcher who is as good as there is in the game, and Max Scherzer, 1-1. Brinson will lift one into shallow right field. Coming on is Bryce Harper. And that'll do it for the Brewers in the second. A leadoff walk, but that's it as we move to the bottom of the second. Two nothing Nationals. Nothing lead here at Nationals Park as Michael Blazek gets back to work. Our scoops from the clubhouse brought to you by Car Soup. Anthony Swarzak was acquired in the trade yesterday with the White Sox. He traveled to D.C. last night 
and this morning is here with the team. And Swarzyk said his reaction to the trade, he said he was pretty excited. He said it's a special opportunity, something he certainly did not expect coming into the season. But he said uh, he's certainly excited. His early take on this team, he said, is that they work hard, they play hard. He said this is a group that does not give in, and he's looking forward to joining them here. And he said it's cool to be a part of a move like this. He said a trade like this indicates it's a good thing. The team is winning. He said rebuilding is obviously a big thing in the league right now. He said prospects carry a lot of weight, so he understands what the Brewers gave up, giving up Ryan Cordell in the trade. But he said to see an organization make an adjustment like this midseason and really go for winning and a playoff spot, he said it's cool to be a part of a move like that. All right, Sophia, thank you very much. And matter of fact, Swarzak has already helped the Brewers this week before he knew he was going to be a Brewer. Swarzak got his first career save on Monday. That was at Wrigley Field. It was a four-out save. Helped the White Sox beat the Cubs. Folks in Milwaukee should like him already, then. Absolutely. There All you go. Him. All in. Michael Blazik in his first major league start. Facing Anthony Rendon. Basic ahead of the count of all two strikes. Ten starts at Colorado Springs, including his final nine appearances. That did well. A 313 earned run average in 20 appearances between the rotation and the bullpen. Picked up a couple of saves. There's that changeup that he was working on down in the minor leagues. It's three straight strikeouts now for Blazik. He got Zimmerman and Murphy to win the first. He gets Rendon to begin the second. Well, now a four pitch pitcher is Michael Blazik. This is something he worked on down in Triple A Colorado Springs and back to back strikeouts on that pitch. You got Murphy on the changeup. Never saw that pitch, that changeup when he was working out of the bullpen. Face Adam Lind. It makes Blazik an intriguing option. Four pitches working for you. Someone that obviously they're using today, but you can keep an eye out for him moving forward. All speed has Lind out in front. Remember, the Brewers designated him for assignment. Right about opening day, a few days later, he cleared waivers, outrided to Colorado Springs. Two balls, one strike to the former Brewer, Adam Lind. Brewed two years ago, he hit then, he continues to hit now. He's been pretty good out there in left field. I mean, the, the chances that he's had have not been impossible, but he's made all the plays. Another good change up on the outside corner. And out there and left for the third straight night. This high Z on the DL, Ryan Rayburn. The bereavement list, his grandfather passed away. We've had a number of other injuries out there. A swing and a miss for Adam Lind. And that's four in a row now for Michael Blazik. Two outs here in the second. <laughs> Hey, the Brewers get set for a big three game series against the St. Louis Cardinals next Tuesday, August 1st through Thursday, August 3rd, as the rival clubs face off in the National League Central Showdown. Great seats are still available at Brewers.com. That comes in for three. An off day, and then uh, the Cardinals come in. Back to Central Division play, that homestand. Jose Lobatone gets the call behind the plate here this afternoon. Switch hitting catcher. He has started. He has hit safely in each of his last five games. It's the call for Matt Weeders. They have three catchers on their 25 man roster. Pedro Severino, we have seen him in this series come off the bench. Fastball is inside. And anyway, with this way the starting rotation is, I mean, when they're healthy, you really don't need eight guys in your bullpen because they're 
You know, they work their pitch counts pretty well. They pitch deep in the game, so you know, they elect to go with five bet players on their bench. And three of those five, or two of the five on the bench, are catchers. Gives Dusty Baker a little bit more flexibility in making moves when you have that extra guy that can catch. Two balls, two strikes. Lazik against Lobatone. Lazik looking for a clean inning after giving up a two run homer to Harper in the first. There's a fly ball out the center. Measuring it is Lewis Brinson, and in fact, Blazik gets that clean inning. A couple of strikeouts and a fly ball as we are through two Nationals lead two nothing. The Nationals with the early lead here in D.C. Take a look at this stellar pitcher. An all-star each of the last five years with the Nationals. Cy Young Award winner once with the Tigers. Last year with these Washington Nationals. Let's go back what he Among the many things he's done, a 20 strikeout game. May of 2016. He is also the author of two no-hitters. Two years ago against the Pirates and the Mets, respectively. He has done it all. Remember, he was a draft pick of the Arizona Diamondbacks. That moved around. Took him a little while to get into the groove, and once he did with the Tigers, he has been among the best in the game for the last several years. Yeah, his first couple of years, he couldn't find a plate. I think that's why the Diamondbacks elected to trade him to Detroit. Boys, he found that he doesn't walk anybody hardly. He did walk Shaw earlier in the game, but something else. Seven straight winning seasons for Max Scherzer. And eight straight years where he has given his team at least 30 starts. And you just count on him every turn. He has led his league in wins. Three occasions, twice with the Tigers in the American League, and then last year a 20 and 7 record, 20 wins tops in the NL. It's quite the resume. Seven year contract with the Nationals. Bandy. Perfect positioning by Daniel Murphy for out number one. No good contact with Jet Bandy, but unfortunately the shift gets him. One away here in the third. Scherzer, like Blazik, already with four strikeouts through the first two. Blazik will take his cut, see what he can do against the Cy Young winner.
Cooper Blazik. Time in his career, he along with Tyler Thornburg and Jeremy Jeffress. A little something going there for a little bit of time. Back into the pen for the crew. Yeah, when Blazik was healthy with the Brewers in that bullpen, I mean, he was a money. He put together a nice string of outings from Milwaukee out of the bullpen. He battled some injuries last year. Forearm strain, broken hand a couple of years ago. That happened in mid August. One of those guys who keeps fighting back, though, really, in many ways, symbolic of this team in general this year. I mean, you get DFA'd as he did in early April and staying with it. He's been up and down this year. Trying to make something of this opportunity, getting the start in place of Matt Garza as Blazik goes down swinging. Two away here in the third. Yeah, guards with a lower leg strain that he had happened a couple of days ago, just working out. End up on the DL. It's good that uh, the Brewers had, you know, Blazing in the bullpen and started down in the minor leagues. We can uh, do the emergency start today. Two men out here in the third as Scherzer goes through the order the first time, allowing just a walk. That was to Travis Shaw leading off the second. And there's Eric Sogard. Every other day we have seen him in the lineup going back to last weekend when he came off the DL series against the Phillies. First out of the scene, He's called up in mid May. Already hit three home runs this year. That marks a career high for Sogard. Yeah, but hasn't been able to get that uh, that stroke back that he had before he went on the DL. Boy, he was red hot, getting on base, walks, scoring a lot of runs. But yeah, it's kind of stumbled out of the gates after coming off the DL. Yeah, one for 11, in fact. Ball two strikes to Eric Sogard. Yeah, it was a tough one. He's playing so well, and then the ankle injury caused him to miss those dozen games. Missed all of last year with the left knee injury. Had surgery in April, third week of April in 2016. But he certainly has had an impact on this Brewers team this season. Shoots one out of play. And just such a big sweeping breaking pitch from Scherzer. That pitch breaks a lot and it breaks late too. That's what makes him so tough, amongst a lot of other things. But he's got that pitch. He's got the cutter that he calls his lane changer. And here comes another one. A one two pitch. Yeah, he's got some interesting terminology I told uh, Scherzer you mentioned the lane changer he's got that little change up that's his mid range jumper yeah right, they call it when he's got that work when I got my mid mid range jumper working I'm uh, going to be OK. <laughs> the lane changer is the cutter. Doesn't always have to be the deep three right right a little mid range game going. <laughs> The tone hangs the sign. A ball, two strikes to Eric Sogard. Fastball away. Even with Sogard scuffling at the plate coming off the DL, his average still at 311. Good at working the counts. He'll draw a walk for you. Hanging in there against Scherzer. Brewers on Tuesday night got the better of Edwin Jackson. We'll start this series on a good note. Leading most of the way last night until the Nats rallied. It's a call third strike on Sogard. Another one two three inning six strikeouts for Scherzer. We move to the bottom of the third.
<laughs> that was a uh, it was a, a comical I guess moment in a two touchdown win for Miami Heat last night but you see just about everything I guess if you're rock I'll defer to you here mm -hmm. if you're around the game long enough uh, would I be right in assuming you haven't seen someone move the on deck circle before? no well he was told to get get on the on deck circle so instead of him moving back where he should have been he brought the on deck circle to where he wanted to stand <laughs> right behind uh, the, you know the pitcher you know the hit pitchers don't like that right behind the batter I should right. say pitchers don't like that because you feel like you're you're timing him up. I mean he was uh, literally almost right behind home plate. Kind of a dangerous spot but again you know Jerry Davis asked him to move and he didn't throw him out. <laughs> Trying to be cute that's what you get right. Yeah I guess. A little volatile around baseball last night. Dog yeah. days. Man. Yeah, it gets to you after a while, right? Bryce Harper with the meltdown last night. Yeah, they say that was his first such eruption this season. He's been ejected ten times in his career. And he did go off last night back in the lineup today, and he's hit a two run homer. Dusty Baker. Last night, saying, "Look, he's protecting his player the way you would expect. I'd rather have to tone a guy down than have to rev him up." But again, not a good time to be thrown out of a ball game. At right. the time, it was a tie game. I mean, inning, fortunately yeah. for Harper, you know, Zimmerman and the rest of the offense picked him up. Rosie just walks Scherzer to lead off the third inning. Set him down in order in the second along the way. Let's go back to last night. We're talking about with Harper. This is against Josh Hader. This is the one that got him right here. You can see already. That's not one he got thrown out. It was a strike three pitch right here. And there's the eruption. 98 in a tie game. The, the go-ahead run was at third base at the time. Looked like a strike to me. That first strike was yeah, what. Did. You know, ruffled the feathers of Harper. What a job he did yesterday, though. Yeah, that was a, you talk about a big stage moment. Josh Hader with family and friends in the house. That, that's the shame of it, and where the game can be cruel to you because Jimmy Nelson pitched a terrific ball game. Josh Hader had a huge moment. But it tends to get lost in the shuffle because of what the Nationals ended up doing in the eighth inning, scoring seven times, and right, and Brewers end up losing the ball game. But you would think, again, big picture, that, that's a huge boost for Hader being able to step up in a moment like that and get a punch out of a guy who could very well end up being the MVP. And you wonder what David Stearns and the Brewers are thinking about the future of Josh Hader, as good as he's been out of the bullpen. He has been unbelievable. Not just against left handers but right handers as well. It's good win lifting a fly ball deep to right field and it's out of here. Number 10 for Brian Goodwin and it's 4 nothing Nationals. This guy has some pop in his back. To put him in there Adam Eaton. Double to left, his first time up. Now home run to right. A two-run shot after Blazek walked Scherzer to lead off the inning. And that two-seamer that uh, you know, didn't stay on the inner half of the plate, inside corner, just drops it into the first row. And that time because of the injury to Adam Eaton, and he is. Taking advantage, the average fairly low, but the power is evident. Ten home runs for him. It's Wilmer Defoe. Sacrifice bunt in the first inning. The Nationals with a couple of home runs here early on against Michael Blazik. Harper in the first, Goodwin here in the third. One back at a deep right center field, and the Nats go back to back. A 
the scenario you feared is unfolding here early on for Craig Council. It's this powerful offense getting it from all angles right now. Yeah, slide it right down the middle of the plate and that deep were able to give it a ride. I mean, way back off the facing of the second deck out there in right center. A hanging breaking ball on a 1 1 count. Five zip, and uh, when you're facing Matt Sergio, you're in trouble. Big trouble. Here is Bryce Harper. With the first of the three home runs the Nationals have here today. Two run blast in the first. Brewers down five against a pitcher with a 2.26 ERA. Over in front there, one and one. They mentioned that uh, you know, Blazing has been stretched out down in the minor leagues, meaning that you know, he has been around 100 pitches on a number of occasions. That was a while ago. I mean, we're talking a month since he's done that. I wonder how long he's going to be able to go today. Brewers bullpen starting to stir a little bit. Cubs are next. This is where the managers earn the big bucks. Now you try to handle your bullpen, knowing you have a big series. Division rivals coming to your yard. They squeeze as much as they possibly can out of Blazik today. Right. You don't want to empty out your bullpen. You got Willie Peralta down there that you could probably get a few innings out of. Swarzak, he's probably going to pitch today. Wozak well, with the White Sox this year could give his team multiple innings. Which of the four out save he had was his first big league save, but he could go out there for a second frame. Did that to Rick Renteria's team. Still nobody out in the third. A leadoff walk to Scherzer and then back to back dingers. Goodwin and Defoe. Yeah, those two guys hit home runs. Now you get into the, uh, the troublesome part of this batting order. Scherzer, the pitcher, walks. Goodwin Defoe with homers, and now you really get into the big hitters. And the big four back in the lineup for Baker here today: Harper, Zimmerman, Murphy, and Rendon. Two-two again. Harper, as you might imagine, among the leaders in the National League in walks. Fourth behind Joey Votto, Paul Goldschmidt, and Matt Carpenter. You mentioned as this trade deadline approaches, there isn't one team that you would think appears completely comfortable. Dodgers as much as they're winning and then they often do it in dramatic fashion they rallied last night to beat the twins but they have Kershaw down talk around here in D.C. as they could use another bullpen piece Harper sends one left center field and back to back to back for the Nationals in the third. Back and down and through that baseball. So, a couple of homers for Harper today. Four already for the Nationals. There's a nine pitch at bats. Harper goes deep. Well, he's flashy, he's volatile, but above all else, he is incredibly talented. 
back to form after a tough year by his standards in 2016. There's still no activity in that Brewers bullpen. Craig Council needs innings. He needs uh, you know Blaze to get a little bit deeper into this game. Four run third, still nobody out. A walk and three homers. Here's Ryan Zimmerman, and he sends one deep to left, and that's out of here. Four in a row for the Nationals. on Daniel Murphy now. Four home runs in a row. Goodwin, Defoe, Harper, and Zimmerman. Now Daniel Murphy, he's hit 17 on the year. Number 17 coming last night. Well, now the Brewers have really Peralta getting loose in a pen. Only feeling right now for Michael Blazing. No kidding. There's, as Rock mentioned, Peralta getting ready. He pitched on Sunday for Council, and actually Peralta gave Craig two good frames against the Phillies. of the first for the Nats Blazik got him in order in the second Washington is just flat out teed off here in the third a one two It's a lot of home runs or strikeouts. Murphy will hit the home runs, but he's only punched out 40 times this year. Nelson was able to get him once last night via the K. No. And a fastball and Lazy got him back in the first inning on a changeup. History here for the Nats slash Expos. First time four straights hitters have left the yard. Harper was number three out of four. Lazik with the one two. Zimmerman the fourth of the four in a row. Those are trying to get Murphy for the second time. Murphy with a fly ball out to center field. Lewis Brinson will squeeze it and finally there is one out in the third. A yeah, good curveball that time by Blazik. Big breaker down in the zone. Murphy an easy pop out. Try to fight through this if you're Michael Blazing. See, the next pitch will be his 30th of this inning. 60th of the game with just one out in the third. Here is Rendon. That really is tough duty for Blazing. You think about it. I mean, you have a spot start here and. Made four appearances out of the bullpen. Hadn't made a start since the end of June. And you're facing probably the best offensive team in the National League. And one you figured was going to bust out. They'd been shut out a couple of times in the last week, including Tuesday against Zach Davies and Oliver Drake. And Nelson had him locked up. Randone turns on one deep to left, and that's the fifth bomb of the inning. 
for the Nationals. Five out of six hitters go downtown. Unbelievable. It's hard to do this in batting practice. And they are just locked in. They have Rendon with a fastball middle in, and he hits it over the Brewers' bullpen, and Craig Council really has no choice but to pull Blazing and bring on Willie Peralta. That's a tough spot for Blazing here today. Blazing Matt Garza getting a spot start. Against an offense that is now absolutely red hot. Pitching change, Blazik out, Peralta in. 8 0 Washington in the third. to you by the Wisconsin Lottery, reminding you to please play responsibly. And by Toyota, let's go places. Well, the Brewers had a rough eighth inning last night, and they are having a brutal third inning here today. A short day's work for Michael Blazik as he has run into an offense that is mashing. Five homers out of the last six hitters, including Anthony Rendon, Still only one out here in the third. As Rod mentioned, Craig Council really had no choice. He no, was trying I mean, to get what he could, but he just doesn't have it. You just can't leave him out there, you know, as a sacrificial lamb, so to speak. But, uh, you know, Willie Peralta, his first outing back from the minor leagues, he went on a rehab assignment after he went on the disabled list, came back, pitched on Sunday against the Phillies. Two scoreless innings that included uh, four strikeouts, only allowed one hit. He had a right calf strain that landed him on the disabled list. So you wonder if Craig Council is going to be asking for multiple innings out of Peralta. You would think so. It was just one step, but it was an important one. At least you hope it will be for Peralta the way he did pitch on Sunday. So he gets this chance to try to help the club and try to help the club by eating some innings here today. Here is Adam Lind. Struck out in the second inning. So he started with a walk to Max Scherzer and then four consecutive home runs. Brian Goodwin, Wilmer Defoe, Bryce Harper, and Ryan Zimmerman. And then after a Daniel Murphy fly ball to center, Rendon launched one out of here to left. Six homers off of Blazik, five of them here in the third. A ball, two strikes to Lind. Now, these are important addicts for Willie Peralta, even in an 
even in a eight to nothing ball game. I mean Willie Peralta has to stay focused and continue to pitch well. Build off his last outing. Lynn sharply hit and he gets through a base hit. Sogard shifted over but Lynn able to shoot one through. Still just one out here in the third. Hey, you make mistakes to these guys and they are going to belt it pretty good. I mean barreling it up. Really on a 2 2 pitch. Getting a little bit too much of the plate, and Adam Lynn barrels it up right back through the middle. Sogard can't come up with it. Eight runs, a like number of hits now for the Nationals. But that's their first single of the day. Is Jose Lobaton. Lind is going and the throw down to second. And Lind has himself a stolen base. And I don't know about that. I mean, you've got an eight to nothing lead, you're piling on, and Adam Lind decides to take off. Brewer's not holding them on, thinking that they're not going to run. Eight nothing in the third inning. Taken off, not being held on. The ball, no strikes to Lobatone. He went around. Lobatone with a fly ball to Brinson in the second. Here's the 1 1. That's it toward right center field. That's to the gap and the wall. Lind will score. Lobatone to second, and it's 9 0 Nationals. Pitch that gets a little bit too much of the play. That's kind of been the common theme today, at least in this inning. And Bryce Harper hit a pretty decent pitch, a change up down, but the other, you know, hits and home runs came on pitches pretty much down the middle, mistake pitches. Adam Lind after singling, stealing the base and scoring on the double. Here's Scherzer, his walk began this inning. Tenth man to hit. So once again, a seven run inning for the Nationals. Eighth inning last night, third inning today. Still just one out. Oh and two the count to Scherzer. Scherzer will lift one out of play and Scherzer's last start against Arizona he gave up back to back to back homers. In the first inning. Yeah, first three hitters of the ball game and yeah, able to settle down. And you don't see too many innings like this in the big leagues. No, you don't. Incredible. Five home runs, four in a row. And, you know, the Brewers have made some mistakes. I mean, Blazik made a lot of mistakes with his pitches, but still, for them, for the Nationals to be up there and, and squaring them up like they did, hitting all those home runs, that's that's a difficult thing to do. Even on bad pitches. Every now and again you figure they're gonna ground out or you know pop one up. Little tapper by the mound charging is so guard and the throw is not in time. Infield single for Scherzer. 
Orbiton moves to third. There's enough there to warrant a challenge. Yeah, a little knuckle buster and you know, Sogard able to get there, but he looks safe. Yep, he beat it. No challenge. Ten hits already for Washington. Yeah, really, Carlton has not been able to retire a batter. Here's Brian Goodwin. He started the home run parade in this inning. Two run shot to right. He runs well. He would be tough to double. Sharply right at somebody, and that's it sharply right at Travis Shaw, and there it is, your double play. He lines into one, and finally, mercifully, the third inning is over. The Nationals bring out the big lumber, and they lead by nine. This concert is brought to you by Miller Lights, the original light beer. Well, the Washington Nationals showing why they have this big lead in the National League East and why they are a serious threat to last a while in the postseason. What they did in the third inning, five homers, four in a row. Harper is hit two today, and you see some Brewers record on that match. list. Yep. Back in 06. An incredible offensive performance by Washington so far today. In the meantime, Max Scherzer has not allowed a hit. Scherzer just allowed a walk to Travis Shaw in the second inning. Scherzer will face Thames, Santana, and Shaw here in the fourth. He spent some time on the bases, a very long inning. See what the crew can do here. Thames on Tuesday night homered. He popped one off the facade in the upper deck, side to the upper deck in right field. Twenty four homers. He has driven in forty five. Check out the Powerball home run leaderboard. That 24th moved him ahead of Travis Shaw, who had matched him earlier on Tuesday night. 
Shaw had a three run bomb. Thames a solo shot. Santana hit his 17th last night. Braun and Perez rounding out the Powerball home run leaderboard. He's hit three of them on Tuesday. Back to back, in fact. Thames and Manny Pena. Kind of the way the road trip is going when the Brewers are able to hit home runs, they win games, right? I mean, that's kind of what the story has been on this road trip. One, two to Thames into the shift. Murphy the backhand stab and the throw not in time. Thames, an infield hit to begin the fourth. Well, Mookie off the back. I mean, anytime Max Scherzer goes out on the mound, you're in the back of your mind thinking, does he have no hit stuff today? A pretty good changeup that Thames was able to wait back on. I get enough of it, and Daniel Murphy not able to get much on the throw, and Thames able to beat it first hit from Milwaukee. It's good reverse jinx action right there. Yeah, get that out of the way. That's right. That's the last thing you need today. Yeah, stop the nonsense. Here's. Domingo Santana. Wave it and miss in there for strike one. Struck out of the second inning. Scherzer with six strikeouts already. Against the slider of Scherzer this year, hitting all of a buck 89. And they're not hitting well against I mean, the period. Yeah, was, everything works. I was going to say, what is it against yeah. all his other pitches, yeah. right? Yeah. And when you have an opponent batting average for the season overall at 170. Right. How about this? Right hander is just 126. That's just. Silly. Pretty hard to find a flaw. He will give up a big fly now and then, but you also have to remember he works a lot of innings. Most of the National League last year may very well be there again this year. A one two. Approaching 200 punch outs this season. He's at 198 at the moment. Two balls, two strikes to Santana. And a double play chance. Murphy, Defoe, Zimmerman. 4 6 3. There are two men out. Hit it, uh, hit it pretty well. Did Domingo Santana, but unfortunately, right at Murphy, easy room service double play for the Nationals. It's just incredible how the complexion of a, a three-game series in July can turn. The Brewers led most of the way last night. The Nats. In the bouncing ball that just goes over the glove of Jesus Aguilar. Another bouncer that found the hole between Aguilar and VR. And then the Nats, you know, they got their extra base hits as well, but went after a couple of pretty good pitches and able to make it pay off for them. And they rallied last night and they explode here today. And just like today in that Eighth inning last night was the bottom of the order to get things going. Max Scherzer today drew a walk and then the home run barrage started. It was a walk last night to Matt Weeders, eighth man of the order. And what do you see? They were awfully quiet. Better than a game and a half, and they have just erupted. Little reminder of how good this Nationals offense is. 
Also pretty much of a nice tribute to that uh, those last two starts the Brewers put together. Zach, to keep them down the way they did. You're right Zach Davies on Tuesday Nelson last night. Did that big four for the Nationals but they've gotten power from. Ryan Goodwin Wilmer Defoe hit his third of the year here today. Shaw launches one deep to right field if it's fair it's gone it's fair and it is gone upper deck for Travis Shaw number 24. Well, fastball in and Travis stays hot. Boy, oh, he's been terrific. I mean, he took a fastball that was in on a 3 0 pitch and knocked it out of here. Why not? Scherzer fell behind, wanted to throw him a strike, and Shaw hit one out of here. There it is. Fastball in. Question was, was it going to be fair? It was right inside the foul pole. And the Brewers on the board. Shaw matching. Eric Thames now for the home run leadership matching him again. He did so on Tuesday night. This is here on Thursday afternoon. Aaron Perez at the plate. He swings and lifts a fly ball out toward Adam Lind in shallow left. He'll do it here in the fourth inning but the Brewers get on the board another rocket off the bat of Travis Shaw. As he goes to the top shelf here at Nationals Park. That's lead by eight. Max Scherzer, the Nationals have a 9 to 1 lead here in the fourth. And the Brewers Community Foundation hosted a crew of cyclists that rode 25 miles in support of Urban Ecology, Dream Bikes, and the American Cancer Society, hitting for the cycle of making a difference for children and their families throughout Milwaukee. All right, Sophia, thank you very much. We move to the bottom of the fourth inning here at Nationals Park. Willie Peralta is still in there and need him to chew up some innings here today. That's a captain obvious statement that can get it but if you're just joining us Michael Blazik getting a spot start and the Nationals just went to work on him six bombs five in the fourth or rather five in the third including four straight. Peralta finishing up that inning and struggling to begin this frame as Defoe with a base hit. It's his second hit of the day. Here comes Harper. He is Homer twice already. This is the day so far for the right fielder. Two run bomb in the first. And then solo in the third. That was the third of four straight long balls against Blazing. Yeah, hit a high fastball his first time up. 
a change up his second time up. Already 11 hits for the Nats. And he sends it right where they were giving it to him. Down the line and left. Default motoring around third. He's going to score. Harper into second. And it's 10 to 1. Boy, lonely out there on the mound when he got an offense that's just barreling up everything, finding holes. Well, Willie Peralta has given up a lot of line drives so far. He did get that double play on a line out to Travis Shaw, but there's a fastball away, and you can see how well Bryce Harper covers the plate. Shoots that one right down the line with Defoe's speed. He scores easily. Continue to mash. Here's Zimmerman. Well, we mentioned they need innings out of Peralta. That pen is quiet. They need him to try to grind through this as long as he can. Well, one pitch to Ryan Zimmerman. A never ending struggle for counsel and pitching coach Derek Johnson is trying to get that form back with Willie Peralta. 17 game winning form. And with his arm, I mean, it's awfully difficult to, uh, you know, give up on him. And if you send him down, he's going to be exposed to any other team that wants him. And, you know, the Brewers just don't want to do that. They have given Willie. Many opportunities to get things right. And Zimmerman sends one deep to right, and the onslaught continues. Second of the day for Ryan Zimmerman. It's one of those days they could just cover their eyes and they'd still barrel one up. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, and if you're Craig Counter, you, you know, you're figuring that this is going to be a tough one to come back on. But, you know, right now he's thinking about that Cup Series. What's he going to do in a Cup Series? He's got to be able to keep some of his guys fresh for tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday. The Brewers have a day off on Monday, but I think the biggest concern right now for Council is trying to get through this game without blowing out your entire bullpen. Yep. And having guys fresh for tomorrow. Absolutely, a huge series. You lose by one or you lose by 20, it's a game, and you've got the division rivals coming in. It's part of the beauty of the sport. You can flip it back into your favor quickly. Might sound silly at the moment, but yes. we have seen this club. <laughs> Battle back all year. And so if you ask yourself why Willie Peralta is still out there, I mean that's why because he needs to get a lot of innings. I mean two, three innings out of Willie minimum, I would imagine here. And you know, so many guys you can use one day and have them all ready for the next day. It's the, the trick, one of many that a manager has to deal with. You do what you can on a given day, but you have to look bigger picture. Right now they're just in a position they have to stand out there and take the hits. Two balls two strikes to Daniel Murphy. Walter trying to record an out here in the fourth inning. Here's the two two. It's ripped hard but out of play. I mentioned last night they hit a couple of choppers that got through. There's no choppers to be had today. They're launching. Yeah, they are. And Willie's giving up six hits. Jimmy Nelson pitched so well last night. 
One of those tough luck no decisions for him he has really given his team a lot of terrific outings he had a struggle in April but maybe a bump here or there after that but few and far between he has pitched extremely well and now Murphy draws a walk. He's been around long enough. 17 years as a player. Took over as manager in May of 2015. He has seen the movie from both sides. And he knew he was going to have to get into his bullpen today, regardless, because you figure Blazek maybe four or five innings. But two and a third has got the Brewers in a bind here today. And still nobody out in the fourth inning. There's Rendon. He has been involved in the home run parade. He too can be an MVP candidate. Look into the into the metrics, the advanced stats. He's the top player in wins above replacement in the National League. His war number is five. Saber matricians know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Long story short is he's really good. Yeah, no kidding. And he doesn't get a whole lot of play. I mean, all the other superstars that are around him in the lineup, you know, Murphy, Harper, Zimmerman, all the pitching that they have. I mean, quietly he has put together a solid year. Strong arm. Shows him well over a third. His comeback player of the year in the National League last year was Rendon. Battled a lot of injuries in 2015. Knee injury specifically limited his year two seasons ago. He had an individual game back in late April where he erupted this year against the Mets. Got off to kind of a slow start, did Rendon. Throughout most of May, he did not homer. He drove in five, and then on April 30th against the Mets, he went six for six. He homered three times. He drove in ten. Yeah, that's a good week. It is. And he had it all in one day for Dusty Baker. That's a good ten days. <laughs> Two weeks. <laughs> ten RBIs. Two balls, two strikes. Sharply hit, and of course, a fair ball down the left field line. Murphy to third as it bangs off the sidewall. Rendon into second. And the fifth straight hitter reaching for the Nationals in the fourth. We talked about the lonely feeling that Blazik had. It's more of the same now for Peralta. Bullpen still quiet. Yeah, Derek Johnson, Craig Council trying to put together a game plan to get through this game. Because right now, it looks like it's going to take a long time to get to the eighth inning. And unfortunately, Craig Council thinking about going to the phone. Yeah, pen may not stay quiet for long. Tunnel down there, the bullpen coach. Here's Adam Lind. He singled, and there's a ground ball over to VR. This will get a run home, but finally an out. As Murphy scores. RBI ground ball from Lind as Rendon moves to third. 13 to 1 the score. Carlos Torres getting loose down in that Brewers bullpen. Council doing all he can to try to get Peralta through here, but at some point you might have to pull the trigger. And here's Lobaton pulling the trigger, and there's another one. Make it 15 to 1, Washington.
That's eight bombs on the day for the Nationals. And we're in the fourth. Yeah. Here's Scherzer. It's a record tying eight home runs in a game. That was a National League record. Scherzer has not been retired. He walked in the third, infield single also in the third. As a 3 0 counts here in the fourth. Unfortunately, a step backwards here for Peralta after pitching well in Philadelphia on Sunday. I mean, and none of these hits that they've gotten, I mean, he's given up eight hits, and every one of them have been hit hard. Except maybe the one from Scherzer back in the third. But I wonder how long Craig Counts was going to leave Willie out there. And you would think Torres is ready. It's just a matter of when Council wants to make the move or has to make the move. You know, he doesn't want to. And Torres is ready. He's standing on top of the bullpen mound. And and whenever you need me, I'm ready. Peralta facing the ninth man here in this fourth inning. Already batted around once. This will be the second time. So the roof has collapsed here in the third and fourth innings against the Brewers. Goodwin a double a two run homer and lined into a double play and it finally ended the last inning. The battle to get up here to the big club did good one. He struggled in triple a couple years ago. Bounced back last year. Put up some pretty good numbers. Took some injuries, but uh, he's here and he's been productive. Snap back after really struggling in spring training. Home run he hit today is his tenth of the year. Three balls, one strike. Nationals have had a seven run inning and now a six run inning. Full count to the center fielder, Brian Goodwin. There you go. And a strikeout for Peralta, two men out of the fourth. And they got him on a slider that was kind of a spinner, didn't do much, and he chased it out of the strike zone. Fourth inning. Which is a lonely feeling for a pitcher about the manager. Yeah. Not lonely for everybody. Uh -huh. That's going to be jumping on that plane today. This is not the way you want to finish a road trip. I mean, that's an understatement, of course. But Walter sails one over Jet Bandy. Scherzer to second. Well, he's pretty much throwing off sliders at this point. I mean, he hadn't thrown too many fastballs since that that low baton home run. Defo with a sack bunt, a homer, and a single.
Shades of Carlos Gomez there swinging out of yeah, his helmet. Yeah, 15 and 1, and he's uh, uppercutting, uh -huh. coming out of his helmet. All right. Now, back in the day, and the was, next pitch would be kind of predictable. I was going to go there, but I decided not to. But <laughs> since you mentioned it, <laughs> I thought I'd throw it out there. Yeah. I watched. You lived it. Well, and you know that Adam Lynn stolen base last inning too is mm -hmm. kind of iffy. And we mentioned that when he did it. One-two. But if you're the Nationals, you're up there at the plate. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, you're not going to sacrifice. You're not going to make outs. You want to get hits, right? It's got to, you know, they're, they're staying focused, and you know, it's up to the Brewers to make good pitches and get them out. The ball two strikes to Defoe. And this chance, of course, in part because of the injury to Trey Turner and a strikeout there, and finally this fourth inning ends. Rough outing for Willie Peralta. Another big inning for the Nats and a big day for the Nats. Brewers as we head to the fifth time now for our unlimited baseball break brought to you by T-Mobile. We just saw reliever Pat Neshek in Philadelphia and last night he was traded to Colorado in exchange for three prospects including an infielder and two right handed pitchers this season with Philly he went three and two the one one two earned run average in 43 games and Eric Hosmer last night against the Tigers went five for six with a home run and six RBIs including a grand slam in the seventh inning the Royals are now just one and a half games back in the AL Central so the Royals have certainly changed their position uh, many wondering if they were in the buy or sell mode in the first half of the season. Yeah you're right Sophia that was a big question going into the year they have so many players who are in the final year of their contracts if well, they couldn't make a push if they would just sell it off and, and the answer is uh, no they're not selling because they're in the thick of it and but don't forget the twins the Brewers have their annual two there two at Miller Park coming up in early August. And the schedule remains daunting I mean, it's the big leagues it's not like you're going to get a lot of layups to begin with but they have a stretch here ahead of them with teams right in the thick of, of the playoff chase including the homestand with the Cubs and Cardinals coming in. Yep. That's a good year to be mediocre right. Yeah it really is I mean, and it's that. Except for a couple of divisions. It's the dilemma I think with every general manager around it, and it's, it's a nice problem. But when you have two wild cards, you know, it could be a fine line as to you know, are you really a contender or not? And you have a lot of teams in the thick of it. So do you pull the trigger on a move that could you know, get you on a dance floor in, in October? And then when you get in there. If it's a wild card or any kind of a short series, a wild card, obviously a, a one-game deal. 
but who knows? I mean, you know, the Nationals today look like the greatest thing ever. But they're they're nervous around here. They've got a lot of guys hurt. They got Strasburg back on the DL. The team gets hot. You never know, right? I mean, normally good starting pitching and bullpen usually wins in the playoffs. Not necessarily the team that uh, can hit the most home runs. That just doesn't work all the time when you're in the postseason. Facing really good pitching, so yeah, I mean, a lot of teams feel as though they have a shot. They are fouling one off. Two balls, two strikes. Working against Max Scherzer. Well, Dusty Baker knows the drill. Also knows the heartache of getting knocked out in the playoffs. And this illustrates how incredibly difficult it is. You have to be good, but you need an element of luck on your side with the health of your team and who gets hot at the right time. It's the fascinating part of this sport or, or any sport really. It's just uh, it's when you're playing well right I mean you, you play well all season you go into a bit of a tailspin going into postseason and you can bounce quickly. That's the uh, the trick that managers have you know with when they have leads this big. How do you keep your guys engaged right. Exactly. A strike out for VR. That's seven of them now for Max Scherzer in one ninety nine on the year. And you wonder how long Dusty Baker is going to keep Scherzer out there. I mean. Well, a couple of outs it's a. He gets through the fifth inning he'd be the pitcher of record would this be a time where you kind of. Shorten his workload a bit and ask some more out of your bullpen they have they did brought, bring up another reliever today. And Sammy Solis is so they have five lefties in their pen. Yeah how about that. Well, that was how at least for now they replace Strasburg. On the DL. There's Lewis Brinson. And he sends a fly ball to left field. He hit it well. Adam Lind out the track and he runs it down. Two away here in inning number five. Well, he's making it look easy out there. It's pretty impressive by Adam Lind in left. He's not smiling anymore. He was smiling the first two games. I think he expects himself to make these catches. That's not an easy play. That's a slider from Scherzer. Brinson got it down on the end a little bit, but a nice running catch by Adam Lind. He started in left field all three games in this series. I mentioned he played there some, or maybe more than some at times uh, earlier in his career with the Blue Jays, but you've seen him obviously mostly at first and with the Blue Jays as a DH. There's Jet Bandy, and that is a base hit for Jet in the left. It would really be nice moving forward if Bandy could get back to the productivity he had at the plate early in the season. You know, that tag team with he and Pena, they weren't they weren't good just behind the plate, but at the plate, Pena, 300 hitter, and well, Bandy had a really rough month of June, but his start was a good one and important for this team. Yeah, had some big home runs. He really did a nice job behind home plate. He's hit the ball hard twice today. Peralta will go ahead and hit away as we have mentioned council needs innings many as he can get out of Peralta Torres is ready Nationals scored six times in the fourth inning you take your lumps and just see if you can get through another inning or two here if you're Willie Peralta They're probably not going to use growing today you want to give Arcia the complete day off. Aguilar Pena the only other two you don't want to use your only other catcher. That's why you have Willie in the batter's box right now. Two strike pitch. And that's out number two. Make it out number three rather backwards K and that's 200 punch outs for Scherzer this season 15 one the Nationals.
Steelers as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Get live broadcast scoring updates, breaking news, and more right at your fingertips with MLB.com at bat. The official app of the Brewers. Download at bat today. Free for your smartphone or tablet. A must have baseball fan. Keep up to date and all the news around the league. The playoff chase is going on. Well, Carlos Torres will go ahead and come on here. Peralta did bat in the fifth inning, top half, but Council going to his pen and Carlos Torres out there. At 48th appearance for Carlos Torres, last pitched on Friday against the Phillies. He got roughed up pretty good. Four earned runs in a third of an inning. His earned run average went from 396 to what it is currently at 465. Torres will try to do what has not been accomplished today, and that's retire Bryce Harper. Two homers and a double. He has driven in four. And there's a line drive to VR for out number one. That'll do it. There you go. Got him taken care of. That's out number one. We're talking a lot about the Nats and their injuries. Well, the Brewers have a few of their own. Let's check in with Sophia and get an update on that. Yeah, and there is some better news for the Brewers on the injury front. I'll start first with Chase Anderson. He's been on the disabled list since June 29th with that left oblique strain, which he suffered in his last start in Cincinnati. But he made good progress. Yesterday was a good day forward for him as he was able to throw off of the mound for the first time since his injury. So it was a light bullpen session, just 25 pitches. But overall, Anderson said he felt good. And overall, he's been encouraged by the progress that he's made with that oblique. Hopeful that it can be closer to the six-week timeline instead of eight. And remember, it was earlier on this road trip that catcher Stephen Vogt sprained his left knee, that MCL in Pittsburgh on July 18th. Well, he has made good progress this series as well. He's been on the field the last three days playing catch. Told me that earlier today he was able, even able to get down and squat, do some throwing. So uh, Vogt, very encouraged by the progress with his knee as well. That's yeah, encouraging signs. and. Oh, Rocket in some ways that becomes like acquisitions if you can get those guys back and you know, Anderson specifically is putting together a terrific year six and two and a sub three ERA Round ball off the bat of Zimmerman gobbled up by Sogard two up two down. Yeah Chase Anderson has been on the disabled list since June 29th. And about a month he's still got a, a ways to go before he's able to you know go down on a rehab assignment down in the minor leagues and stretch it out a little bit. You see him doing a lot of running in the outfield, and good to see him back doing things back out on the mound. So we got two plus months of season remaining. So much focus on the non waiver trade deadline fast approaching. Brewers with the move earlier this week, sending Ryan Cordell to the White Sox for Anthony Swarzak. Swarzak with the team, ready to go. Daniel Murphy at the plate with two outs and the base is empty. As tough a day as this is for the Brewers for a long season, you can kind of let things work in your favor too. The worst thing that happens out of all of this is they end up a game and a half behind in the standings. Comes play tonight. There's a base hit for Murphy. A possibility that through it all they could still just be a half game back with the Cubs coming to your ballpark beginning tomorrow. John Lester and Mike Pelfrey the pitching matchup tonight's the south side. The Cubs have won the last two games. The White Sox beat the Cubbies on Monday at Wrigley. Cubs bounce back Tuesday and then they got a win last night. Yeah, the worst thing that happened to this Brewers ball club was the All Star game. <laughs> You're right. The All Star break. I mean, they were about as good as it gets going into that All Star break, that four day All Star break. And they just haven't been able to, you know, find that same momentum and that same mojo since. It was interesting that rain out on the day where it quit raining very early in May in Chicago. The Brewers had to make that up on an off day before going to Yankee Stadium. And that was an annoying thought for a while, but the Brewers were playing so well. Great council was able to turn it into a positive going into the game. Say, hey, we're playing well. Let's go. Let's do it. And the Brewers went there and put a whipping on the Cubs yes, and then took did. two out of three. Yeah, and then the All Star break, and it hasn't been the same since. Just yeah. got to find it again. Got to grind through it, get through this. 
And no better time than uh, tomorrow night against the Cubs. Be sweet to tell the the mood of a club and a fan base can turn on a dime. Things can go well over the weekend. Then you got the Cardinals coming in. With this guy going, Eric Thames actually is picking up at the plate here in the month of July. We'll find the answers here for Jonathan VR. Get him going on the bases. So guard. Get him. You know, back into the rhythm. I, I think you know, Craig Council talked over the weekend. The numbers that Sogard put up were crazy before he got hurt. Travis Shaw, in the meantime, has been as valuable to this team as maybe most any player in baseball has been around the league. No doubt, both at the plate and in the field. Has that errorless streak going? Only Don Money sits ahead of him. His manager's streak a while ago. 69 straight now for Shaw. I know that that's potentially a jinx there, but we're also pointing out how well he's played. He's <laughs> handled things over there at third. As Rendon draws a walk. That's okay to go with the facts. Yeah. I want to point out when a guy is getting it done. I mean, he has the the home runs, the runs batted in. But he has given counsel. More than solid play over at third. And there might be third baseman with more range. There are third baseman with more range, but when he gets to it, he takes care of it. Yeah, very accurate throwing arm, and and he plays every day. The other thing you love about Travis Shaw is Adam Lind. Getting it done in left field, getting it done at the plates in this series and this season. And Baker has had him in the lineup. It sets up here to be an interesting end of July and on into August. Today, notwithstanding, this Milwaukee Brewers team continues to be one of the surprises in the game. Just four games separating the first place Cubs from the fourth place Pirates. Mingo Santana, breakout year for him going on right now with what he's done at the plate. Tough first few weeks. And you get the sense that the home run for Brinson last night will be the first of a lot. I certainly hope so for him and this ball club. Gave Brewer fans an idea of that power that he put on display at Colorado Springs. He gave a good ride to a pitch here in this game as well this afternoon. Park held it, but had no chance of holding that home run off Sean Doolittle last night. No, I mean that one out in left center was a blast. And he's going to hit a lot of those. I mean, he's that kind of hitter. He took a Scherzer slider, had it on the end of the bat, and took Lind up against a wall. Ball is strike to Lind. Two on, two out here in the fifth. And there's a bouncing ball over to VR position properly, and that'll do it for the Nationals here in the fifth. Torres gets out of it. The Nats do not score as we move to the sixth in our nation's capital.
long road trip head back to Milwaukee this afternoon. Hey a few months ago three Milwaukee Brewers of the baseball playing variety teamed up with a few Milwaukee Brewers of the beer making variety to create the bearded <laughs> bearded brewer IPA and if you can get there for the official tapping ceremony on Thursday August 10th that'd be great visit Brewers dot com slash theme night to learn how you know I think we need to get there bearded brewer IPA the sooner the better actually <laughs> It does look tasty. <laughs> That'll be fun. A couple of real beer experts there who wear Brewers uniforms, Milwaukee Brewers uniforms. A couple of experts so, in the booth, too. That's exactly right. We will not lie. There's Eric Sogard top of the order here for the Brewers against Max Scherzer as Sogard slaps one over to Wilmer Defoe for the first out of the inning. With one away in the sixth. There's Eric Thames his day at the plate presented by Wendy's fly ball to left in the first inning and an infield single in the fourth. And Eric, he had the historic month of April, and then, as even he told reporters more than once, more than twice, that you just can't expect to keep that pace going. The 11 homers, the 19 RBIs, and yeah, the numbers cooled off. But here in July, he is picking things back up, hitting 290 for homer month. It's not an all-or-nothing scenario with Thames here this month. He's getting on base. And base percentage 371 here in the month of July. Yeah, but you set your bar so high in that first month. I mean, I think people expect a lot of you when you get out of the gates, come out of spring training, hit 11 home runs in the first month. <laughs> I mean, I think anything's going to be a disappointment, or people are going to expect a little bit more out of you after that. Well, the league. Tried to make adjustments to Thames. Mentioned, you, know, you guys talked to him even in spring training, and maybe goal one for him was not to chase. And early in the year, that chase rate was way down. His first time through in the big leagues, it was hot. He started to scuff a little bit the plate, and then he started to chase a little bit. Now he's back to swinging at better pitches, swinging at more strikes. Two strike pitch from Scherzer is fouled off. Such a mental game. You go up there and you know what you want to do and sit back there, you know, you get the count. You get to one, one, two, oh two, all of a sudden you're panicking up there at the plate. It happens to everybody. Jose Lobatone hangs the sign for Scherzer. O2 pitch again. Thames fouls it off again. The top ten in walks is Thames. A ball, two strikes. I'm sure as they're rolling along here with the Nationals putting up the huge number. On the scoreboard, a seven run third, a six run fourth. These long innings have really not affected Scherzer. The Brewers with three hits, the lone run, a Travis Shaw rocket in the fourth inning. Yes, yeah, Scherzer trying to get Fame to chase. He's not doing it. That slider's down and in and change ups away. 91 pitches now for Scherzer. And you mentioned it. it'll be interesting to watch and see how long Baker goes with Scherzer here this afternoon. Nothing doing in the bullpen right now for the Nationals. The spots do up second in the bottom of this inning with the way the score is. Not sure that matters much. Full count to Thames. And the payoff on the way. 
Last good at bat here for Eric. A lot of change ups and sliders to 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 uh, in this at bat. Tenth pitch of the at bat coming up. Ball number one down here for Scherzer. And again, the 3 2. And he walked him. So from 0 2, Thames able to work a walk with one out in the sixth. They've fouled off some tough pitches and. Well, Scherzer, you know, with the off speed stuff, not able to get him to chase and then miss with a fastball. Second walk given up by Scherzer. Thames aboard for Domingo Santana. Struck out and grounded into a double play. Scherzer has had long innings where his offense has put up the big numbers. Scherzer also hasn't been retired. He's walked twice and has an infield single. And sometimes it becomes very difficult, even for a, a guy like Scherzer, who has all the credentials to pitch with a 14 run lead. I mean, you're kind of in cruise mode. You're not reaching back. You're trying not to. You know, exert yourself a whole lot. You want to get that pitch count up. Wouldn't be surprised if this wouldn't be his last inning. Ball a strike to Domingo Santana. Yeah, that intensity, you know, sometimes just not there. But not many guys get to work with a 14 run lead. No, that's uh some unusual air he is into right now. 2 1 pitch. It was a terrific turnaround in Scherzer's career after the, the bumpy days with the Diamondbacks. In that strikeout that he recorded of Peralta in the fifth inning that gave him 200 on the season and just another stat to show you his consistency. So he gives you 30 plus starts on an annual basis. And now the 200 strikeouts, a half a dozen years straight. When you look at his last two years before this year, 2015, he had 276 punch outs. Last year, 284. <laughs> and I mean that's that's mind boggling 34 starts. And he's on a very similar pace this season if not slightly better. Two two to Santana. And there's another strikeout. Nine of them now for Scherzer two away. With two outs, Thames the runner at first. Time to, for our cricket, something to smile about. And when you think of Travis Shaw, as a Brewer fan, you have a lot to smile about. His 24th homer here today. He's just been getting it done all year. Yeah, that's a 3 0 pitch. Serzer uh, coming in on him and knocked it out of here right down the right field line. He has not been retired. Walk home run for Travis Shaw. A typical day for him. Got into the home runs he has hit in this series going upper deck. This afternoon, that's Harper territory here at Nationals Park. It's opened up back in 2008 and will host the All Star game next July. As we are approaching Hall of Fame weekend, a very special. Brewers fans, but Sealy entering the hall. Two balls, no strikes to Travis Shaw. I'm sure the commissioner has finally wrapped up his preparation, and you know, we had him on the air last homestand. He said he had he's gone through 17 different drafts of his speech. 
And that's interesting because you know when Bud talks publicly he, he very rarely if ever has notes. Right. And that's a good point. It's all off the cuff. Yeah. Good for him. He deserves it very much so. He was the the guy who you know, brought a lot of ideas thinking outside the box that you know, as a fan of the game it would I would is this gonna work? Interleague play? Wild cards? It's been it's been huge. The growth of this game. Shaw draws a walk. A couple of Walks here given up by Scherzer in the sixth. And Bud was a commissioner in a very difficult time for baseball, the steroid era and all that, having to deal with you know things like that, the PEDs, and it was very difficult decisions that he had to make along the way. And I think baseball is much better for what he was able to, those decisions that he made. That and the and the competitive balance, and you're, you're going to have the discrepancy in payroll that that exists. But yet, this is a sport where the Kansas City Royals raise a championship banner, and you have the Brewers here in the thick ahead of schedule. Most would tell you, and their rebuild and trying to get back to the playoffs where they last visited in 2011 yeah, it was under Bud Selig's watch that the Brewers moved to the National League. So yeah it'll be another, another fun weekend. It's always enjoyable for Brewer fans when someone close to home is involved. There's Matt Grace one of the lefties available in that Nationals bullpen. Is Aaron Perez? Perez has struck out and it'll fly ball to left. Thames the runner at second. Shaw at first, both reaching on walks. Two strikes and nothing to Aaron Perez. Gets 10 strikeouts with regularity. A run of six straight games of double digit strikeouts this season. And is on the brink of it in what may be his final inning of work here this afternoon. 0 2 pitch. Strasburg on the DL. Dusty Baker has two of the top three starters in terms of ERA in the National League. Number two is here, Scherzer. Number three was last night in Gio Gonzalez. Kershaw, number one. The 0 2. Perez will lift one to left field. Lots of room for Lind. And that'll do it for the Brewers in the sixth. Strand a couple. A good day's work for Scherzer with his team in full control.
<laughs> it was classic Bob Euchre. Yeah. It really was. Uh, I'll remember that speech for a couple of reasons. Jose Lobatone leading off. It was it was also a Hall of Famer, Hal McCoy, a longtime writer for the Dayton Daily News. He's covered the Cincinnati Reds forever, and he's had serious eyesight issues to the point where he was going to quit and did not. And he, to this day, he still blogs about the Reds. I remember talking to McCoy about this. This was several months after the Hall of Fame, Rock. Originally, Euchre was going to give his speech first and then Hal McCoy and McCoy said look not no yeah. wrong order right. let's do this the other way around and McCoy gave a very well, heartwarming speech his love of the game and how Aaron Boone I believe it was Aaron Boone at the time talked McCoy into not quitting and to staying with it he gave his speech and then Euchre gets up there and says boy how people try to get me to quit <laughs> I mean it was the perfect order yeah right it, just a, it was a great day and a you know, two very deserving yeah. members, obviously, of the Hall of Fame. I still see Hal around the ballpark in Cincinnati. Yeah, I, I, I remember those days when he was having some vision problems. It went really bad. That was a while ago, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's tough to uh, follow the Bob Euchre act. It really is. I, I can't say I know how personally. Really, I had a chance to talk to him a couple of times, but read him forever uh, growing up in Ohio. And we're looking at any Romero, by the way, warming up in the Nationals bullpen. Yet another left-hander. Jose Lobatone leads things off. Again, yeah, McCoy's been writing for years and years in Ohio. There's a pop-up. Going out there is Travis Shaw, and he dropped the ball. And there's an error. Yeah, there it is. The streak will end. Yeah, who would have thought that would be the way the streak ends for Travis? Well, Perez got there. And one of those days, I mean, about the, you know, kind of keep drifting back. Look at Perez, he's coming in, but Shaw calls him off. He just kicks it. He just drops it. And that'll be an error on Travis Shaw. Unfortunate way for that streak to end for him. It is, but if there is any silver lining, it's in a 14 run game. It's not in a one run game in the eighth inning or ninth inning, but it does this reminds us. I guess maybe I jinxed him. You can blame me, but you know, it's 69 straight without an error, and he, like any third baseman, you're going to handle your share of rockets over there. Right. So good run. Very good run. Outstanding. I mean, as consistent as anybody on this team has been all season long. Andrew Stevenson pinch hitting here for Scherzer. His day is over. Stevenson, a 23 year old, made his debut in the big leagues on Sunday. Second round draft pick a couple of years ago out of LSU. Started the season in double A in Harrisburg and moved up to triple A Syracuse. Like many, when he got the call, he didn't recognize the number and wasn't sure whether to believe it at first, but the Nats over the weekend hit with more injuries, specifically to Chris Heisey, Ryan Rayburn on the bereavement list. They needed an outfielder. Runs pretty well. Play all over in the outfield, they say. Everybody remembers when they get the first call to go to the big leagues. I mean, it might be a call, it might be. Well, a trip into the AAA manager's uh, office where you get the information. Some managers can be pretty creative with that that call to you. I was actually in Vancouver on an off day. We had an off day. I got a call from then you know, interim manager Sam Saplesio and told me that uh, you know we were in Vancouver. and said you got to get to uh, Texas. I said, "What's in Texas?" I said the Brewers. <laughs> You know the baseball team? Yeah. <laughs> Had no idea. Although, you know, Ted Simmons, Charlie Moore, Ned Yost, all ailing. They were all hurt. They were all hurting. And uh, I got the call and never forget it. The grass just cut a little bit better. The lines look a little brighter, right? Yeah. All the baseballs are nice and nice clean ready yeah. to go walking into that clubhouse in Arlington Texas the old ballpark. Looking around and there's 
Molly Fingers and Don Sutton and Molitor Yount, <laughs> Vukovic, Ogilvy, and well, Schroeder. I, I almost turned around and left. <laughs> I said, what am I doing here? <laughs> Is this the right spot? <laughs> yeah, it's quite the uh, quite the shock to the system when you first do that. So they often say in sports that you get over it the first at bat or the first ball hit to you. Is that is that true? I mean, that seems a little quick when you, uh, yeah, you take a look around. Well, once you get on the field, I mean, you know, once once you get the uniform on, you run out on the field and you start taking batting practice, infield practice, and then it becomes you're playing baseball again until you're facing some of the big league pitchers that you have to face. Then you <laughs> realize you're not in AAA anymore. Throw some nasty stuff up here, don't they? Yeah. Two balls a strike to Brian Goodwin. But it's always good, you know. I had a couple of spring trainings under my belt and got to know these guys a little bit. Well, it's a timely story with this team because we're seeing you know, Lewis Brinson get his second call up as Goodwin hits this one well. Right field, and it's off the wall. Lobatone on his way to third, Goodwin to second with a double. He was making a bid for his second big fly of the day. Another scoring threat going on here for the Nationals. I do remember landing in Arlington, Texas, and it was a game, it was a game that day. I think I landed about 4.30. Couldn't find my luggage. I mean, in all honesty, I had my suitcase, my baseball bag, and here I am. I'm landing in Arlington, Texas. I'm trying to race to the ballpark. <laughs> Turned out I was in the starting lineup. I didn't get there to like 6:30. Who needs the warm-up routine, huh? Just go. <laughs> of I course, it happens no, like I got that, scratched right? Scratch from the lineup. Yeah. I wasn't able to catch that day yeah. because I guess Harvey, Harvey Keene thought, "Wow, the guy just got here." I mean, let him catch his breath a bit, but. <laughs> I had to track down my luggage and jump into a cab and yeah you know of course all this happens as my dream is coming true right can't find the and most people would say well why didn't you just go to the ballpark without your suitcase well I had my cleats I had my gloves I had you know all that stuff all my protective gear kind of come in handy if you want to play <laughs> yeah <laughs> you can't catch a game with a brand new catcher's mitt uh -huh. you know? so you had to make sure you had your baseball stuff do have your protective gear there's a soft liner off the bat of Defoe. That's out number two. But I caught the next day. And the rest, as they say, is history. And it was an historic career. You were part of it. <laughs> you were part of it, my yeah, friend. Of fun, I tell you. Wow. Uh, the, the relationships that you develop, they, they still continue. And a fraternity. Nothing's more important than that. That's what it seems you and everybody says obviously you know if you're on a championship team you remember that but I always hear guys if it's Robin Younts or any of the greats who you get a chance to visit with it's you know the guys being with the guys and here's Bryce Harper sending one into deep right center field the park will hold it this time as Brinson at the edge of the track will make the catch she's hit two bombs and was threatening for a third but Turn back this time as we move to the seventh at Nationals Park.
Afternoon for the Brewers. We move to the seventh inning. Nats in total command. Hey, Brewers fans, if you can't watch the games on TV, you can stream them live on your mobile device with Fox Sports Go. Download the app. Take Fox Sports Wisconsin and Brewers baseball with you wherever you go. Changes now. Andrew Stevenson staying in the game. He will handle things out in center field. Brian Goodwin moving from center to right. Day has ended for Bryce Harper. Good day it was for Harper. And on the mound now is any Romero hard throwing left hander out of the bullpen for the Nationals. Yeah one of five out there for Dusty Baker five left handers. He's got three right handers to go with. You now those five lefties 43rd appearance and a 363 earned run average more strikeouts than innings pitched. 19 walks 52 strikeouts for any Romero. 26 year old out of the Dominican Republic gets it up there in a hurry and this is his first work Rock mentioned since the weekend and he dealt with a back spasm in that game there was a game that were the, the Nationals won handily over the Diamondbacks but there was multiple but there were multiple causes for concern the short outing for Strasburg and then Romero a little back issue. Appears to be fine and back in there this afternoon. There's one other change here for the Nats. Adrian Sanchez at second. In there for Daniel Murphy. Ball is strike to Jonathan Villar. Playing off the seventh inning. A couple of strikeouts today for Johnny. Scherzer goes six and strikes out nine along the way. Just three hits and a run. The run a Travis Shaw homer. VR throws his bat out there and pops it up. And it'll be Defoe for the catch out number one. Nets came back to town having won seven of nine on their most recent road trip. Their homestand will continue this weekend. They will host the Rockies. We some fireworks in that series, some uh, home run hitters. Yes, sir. Rockies acquiring Pat Neshek last night from the Phillies, some minor leaguers. There's Lewis Brinson at the plate. Saw the Phillies over the weekend, and Nishek's name was being thrown around quite a bit. All star year for the Madison, Wisconsin born Pat Nishek. And Brinson hits this one well, left field, and there's number two in the career of Lewis Brinson. Well, he has no problem turning on that fastball. That was 97 miles an hour. Up in the zone, and boy, he's a different hitter already than he was when he first came up. Second home run for Lewis Brinson, and both of them, no doubters. Watch the quick hands up and in, and barrels it up. He knew it. Boy, big and tall, and he's got that leverage. That ball just jumps off his bat. Knocks one over the Brewers bullpen. Well, we are seeing why he is such a highly regarded prospect. We know what the score is and all of that, but if you're Lewis Brinson, if it's a 14 run game or a tie game in the eighth, you're trying to carve a niche. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, you're trying to figure out a way to stay in the big leagues. That's what you're doing. Doesn't matter who's out there on the mound, what the score is. Every time you can make contact like that, you bet. Good for him. Said it last night. You hope it's the first of many for Lewis Brinson and doesn't waste much time hitting his second in the big leagues. Two strikes and nothing to Jet Bandy. Talk about that outfield talent that the Brewers have. They moved one of their prospects to the White Sox and Ryan Cordell. Brett Phillips sent back to Colorado Springs. Feeling that might not be for for long. 
doing some nice things up here. There's a roller over to Defoe. And that is out number two. Yeah, he was starting to swing the bat well. He got a couple of hits on Friday. A couple of home runs. Yeah, he'll be back. Two men outs here in the seventh. Chance for Orlando Arcia to get to the plate. He'll pinch it. He's had a pretty good road trip. You see what he's done in this series. He is 10 for 31 on this trip. It's been a very rough ride in this 10 game, 11 day swing for the Brewers, but along the way, Arcia still continues to hit. Batting average over 280. Brewers are still liking to be a little bit more patient at the plate. He loves, you know, to attack early in the count, you know, first, second, third pitch. He's really handled the number eight spot in the batting order pretty well for a young hitter. Sometimes it can be a challenge hitting in front of the pitcher. We see the numbers for Arcia on this road trip. Well, the results were tough for the crew, but they it wasn't like they played poorly in Pittsburgh. They ran into some really good pitching. You know what stings maybe as much as anything when you drop two out of three to the Phillies they ran into a Phillies team that uh, playing a little bit better Aaron Nola was terrific last Friday they end up splitting the season series with the Phils. The new coming into here was going to be tough. Full count now to Arcia Romero wearing back let that fly at ninety nine. Originally signed with the Rays back in 08 did Romero. Brewers getting both of their runs via the long ball today. Travis Shaw in the fourth and Brinson here in the seventh. Blazik had the spot start and the Nationals went after him in record breaking fashion with the home runs. Payoff pitch to Arcia back up the middle off the glove of Romero and they will still get the play at first. Sanchez off the deflection. And that will do it here for the Brewers. In the seventh, Lewis Brinson, though, with a bright spot for the crew. His second homer in as many games. Stretch time in D.C. Fifteen to two. 
the Nationals have the lead over the Brook Crew. Hey, tonight, today's time of the game winner, Pagan Docks, Bar and Grill and Dane, if they call the Brewers by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. They get 40 tickets to a Friday night game in the Miller Light Beer Pen. They saw for courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Light. Still having fun here in Washington. Yeah, they are. They're hanging in at the ballpark. A lot of worse places to be on a summer afternoon. Oliver Drake. Now on the mound for the crew as we move to the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, he pitched on Tuesday you know, against the Nats. And inning in a third, he finished the game, gave up a couple of hits. Inning in a third, scoreless in the Brewers' eight to nothing victory. The changes here for the Brewers. Arcia stays in the game. And Eric Sogard slides over to third. Ryan Zimmerman is homered twice here today. He was the fourth of four in a row to go deep in the third inning. Ended up going five out of six out of the ballpark. They have hit eight home runs today. Harper with two. Zimmerman two. Leading the way. A 17 hit attack for Washington. They have just unleashed here against the Brewers on this Thursday afternoon. Get it out of your system. And so the Rockies coming in, they may want to save some of those runs. <laughs> Brewers still have to make the trip out there. This, we mentioned this is a tough trip. It's not the last tough trip that the crew has. Still have to go to Dodger Stadium as well as Colorado. Trip to San Francisco. The Giants, though, have just had a terrible year. But you don't say that very much right. in this era. Bruce Bochy at the helm there. About that, they're 40 and 60 lead. Well, they finally got uh, Madison Bumgarner back. He was out quite a while. He was with the accidents he had a couple months ago. Two balls, two strikes to Ryan Zimmerman. And that's hit well, left field, and right there to grab it is Hernan Perez for out number one. And the White Sox finish their home and home. We'll enter that game up a full game, barring a comeback for the ages. Here's Adrian Sanchez. Came up, had his first taste of the big leagues on June 30th against the Cardinals. Trey Turner fractured a wrist, hit by a pitch a day earlier. We'll see if Drake can get through this seventh inning unscathed. Believe it or not, there was an inning where the Nationals did go down in order. That was the second couple of strikeouts and a fly ball. Yeah, Blazing had a good change up that inning, striking out Rendon. Lynn got Lobatone on a fly ball, and then the third inning came around. And that was a disaster for Michael Blazing. Well, the Nationals hang in two seven run innings in the last two games. Eighth inning last night and the third today. And a six run inning. That's right. It was in the fourth. Very 
Council and Derek Johnson just trying to do what they can to get this team through this game and get ready for the Cubbies. Council making the comments yesterday that this acquisition of Anthony Swarzak it means we're trying to get into the playoffs something that yeah. you might not have expected to hear out of the Brewers manager going back to opening day as Sanchez goes back up the middle and that is hit number 18 for the Nationals this afternoon and got a fastball upstairs and he banged it right back through the middle there he is Lewis Brewer Anthony Swarzak a breakthrough year for him the 31 year old as David Stearns pointed out a couple days ago or yesterday actually different guys break through at different points of their career and this year has been that year for Swarzak hey, you got to figure you know the great council wants to even bring him in a game like this. Here's Anthony Rendon. Rendon, a homer, a double, a walk, as you see here today. Count is even a ball to strike. Oliver Drake, third man out of the bullpen this afternoon for the Brewers. Peralta struggled mightily. Torres, a couple of innings where he kept the Nats off the scoreboard. Yeah, you got to wonder what the Brewers are thinking going forward with Willie. The Brewers have given him a, a number of opportunities to get things right. Very disappointing outing today. Yeah, it's unfortunately been the story. It was encouraging on Sunday and then a step in the wrong direction today. And yeah, it's tough because they, you know, everybody, you, know, you pull for a guy like Peralta, but it's just been tough to get that consistency from him that this team dearly needs. Ball two strikes Oliver Drake working against Anthony Rendon. And there's a punch out for Drake two men outs here in the seventh. Adam Lind. The batting average that he has continues to patrol left field effectively. He has all series. The 20 homers for the Mariners last year. 32,000 plus here at Nationals Park today at 35,000 last night. Why not? Their team's in first. Heads up in the crowd. That was a rocket headed over to the seats. Seemed yeah. actually plays better on the road, which yeah. is interesting. Well, not too bad at home, but even better on the road. Brewers up to the this current road trip. They've traveled well. That has turned in a bad way here on this 10 game swing. Yeah, lost today, and the uh, Brewers are going to be 500 away from Miller Park. Yeah, after uh, what would end up being a two and eight trip. They had among the best records in the National League away from Milwaukee. But the Brewer fans hanging tough. Today's a bad day, but it has been a good year so far, and we'll see how these final two months and change unfold. I 
Haven't been too many of these lopsided losses for the Brewers. I mean, there you see what the Brewers have in front of them. Cubs Cardinals coming in. And a road trip, Tampa Bay and Minnesota. And all but the Reds are playoff contenders as you look at that schedule. And then toward the end of uh, August and into September, that long road trip. Yes, sir. A strikeout for Oliver Drake. It's a couple of them here in the seventh. We'll move on to inning number eight. With the Nats leading 15 to 2. Rock your thoughts. I thought he was talking about Teddy Roosevelt didn't win an, an election. That's, like what, a, that's what I thought. I like got a race <laughs> early on in his political career, but kind of threw me a curve right there. That's good stuff, Jeff. Yeah, as always. He yep. was into conservation, Western expansion. Yeah, that's about all I know about Teddy. Yeah, there you go. That's that's. He good. liked to hunt. I know that. That's uh, that's good work again. He Jeff loved Grayson. going out to uh, South Dakota. Mm hmm. And as Matt Gray, I think he likes to hunt as well. 24th appearance for Grace. Gets a lot of ground ball outs. Yes, Not a hard does. thrower. He has 62% ground ball rate, as a matter of fact. Former UCLA Bruin. And Teddy Roosevelt was big into establishing uh, national parks. Yes. Look at you, the historian, Bill Schroeder. You ever been to South Dakota? He liked it out there. Badlands and Deadwood. I, I have. Uh, it was a brief trip. It was for a basketball game, so really didn't get to explore a whole no. lot. But no, not not for a not for a sightseeing trip. And Teddy Roosevelt loved it out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many times have you been there? Once. Okay. Pretty uh, mundane drive from uh, <laughs> the little, Twin yeah. Cities to uh -huh. South Dakota. You know the Badlands right. right there. I think I think you know you, you travel for about six hours and you never move your steering wheel. <laughs> it's straight as a string. With a lot of pilot. Go by the Corn Palace. Mm -hmm. Wall drug. All those landmarks all set, huh? Right. Yep. <laughs> hey, I didn't bring up Teddy Roosevelt. He did. Hey, no, you, you, but you followed up. It's, that's big time. So 
Sometimes you got to drift a bit in a 13 run game. So guard with a ground ball to Defoe, and it was the first out of the inning. I was uh, just sent a text by Jeff. He said that the speed limit on I 90 out in that neck of the woods is 80 miles an hour. He would know. He would know. So as you make your plans for your next vacation, you know you can hit the pedal pretty good. Head it out that way. And lean on it a little bit. It was Eric Thames. And as Ed Cedar, the third base coach for the Brewers, would say, an 80 is just a recommendation. That's right. <laughs> it's just a suggestion. Just a suggestion. Do what you want. There he is. Sir Edward Cedar. He's kind of lonely out there today. Yeah, it has been, unfortunately. But you're around the game for any length of time. You're going to be on the good side of this. You're going to be on the bad right. side of this. Yeah. That's one of those stretches that the Brewers have to press on. Remember, it was earlier this month that Joe Madden turned to John Jay to work an inning because the Brewers were putting the beat down on the Cubs. Was an 11 to 2 game on July 6th. They built that big lead early. That was the makeup game. The rain out in May. The rain out followed by sunburn in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved how that how this Brewers team turned what really setting up to be an annoying trip when you go to Yankee Stadium to take you into the All-Star break they turned it into a positive and, a, and they, they were turning it that way before the game it's easy after the fact to say yeah it was all right but the council in the game before they bust down to Chicago say hey, we're playing well let's go let's let's keep doing this that's and you know the pitching staff actually had set up well the bullpen was set up well wasn't stretched thin going into that one and done in Chicago and on into New York. I remember before that uh, one game in Chicago, they swept the Orioles. That's right. At home. They did. And the other thing to keep in mind, they've had that guy about half the year. Brody not in the lineup here today, and really no need to see him this afternoon. Like to see a lot of them at Miller Park. Getting tomorrow night. And it's just such a different look at that lineup when he's in there. Nobody knows that more than he does. Well, you and BA have, have talked about it multiple times and with good reason. I'm hard pressed to find many players with a prettier swing in baseball than Ryan Braun. Ames, a strikeout, a foul tip. He's in the mid, and there are two men out of the eighth inning. And a hitter that affects the lineup more than Braun does based on how, you know, pitchers pitch to guys around Braun when he's in there, guys in front of him, behind him in the lineup. I and mean, what he benefits when Braun is in there, and, and he knows that. Love in hand, Ryan Braun. Here's Domingo Santana. Santana hit cleanup on Monday. Council shuffled the deck in the lineup, going left, right, left, right down the line against Edwin Jackson. And it was Santana handling that well. Braun moved up to the two hole and was eager to do that at an extra at bat. Santana with a ground ball over to Defoe, and he makes good on this opportunity as well as the Brewers are retired in order. 15 to 2 game.
<laughs> yeah, hold the thought on the story there is, uh, yep, you're looking at Hernan Perez, who is on the mound. Now for the Brewers, as he will face Jose Lobaton. Well, Raka, you had a chat with Aaron a while ago, and you know he's ready to catch if needed. He's the emergency yeah. catcher. Uh, you know, it's this is something a manager doesn't want yeah, to do. Especially Craig Council, he, he hates this. Right. But, I mean, he really has really no choice. Down by 14 for 13 runs here in the eighth inning. So, I mean, this is uh, kind of a no-brainer when you consider the Brewers have a big series coming up at home. So you you, you would think that. Council was able to get through this game with three relievers. Lobatone with a fly ball out to Eric Thames, who moves from first to left field, and one up, one down for Aaron Perez. Well, these guys, uh, position players, they throw under hitting speed, and Hedders have an awfully difficult time waiting back. Gets caught up on the changes here. Jesus Aguilar over at first. And the, uh, the Brewers faced John Jay earlier this month. Now the Nationals face Aaron Perez. 83 there outside. Aaron, a smile on his face as he popped out of the dugout. But uh, I, I agree with you, Rock. Your counsel, you are hating this. No, this is not something he likes to do. And, uh, only an emergency, which I would imagine this would uh, be categorized as one. Works with tempo, didn't that? Stevenson, a line drive and a base hit to right field. And Stevenson reaches. And this is his first big league hit. Yeah, there it is. Off a position player, not ideal, but he'll take it. Stevenson reaches against Perez, who now works against the top of the order, and Brian Goodwin has put together a big time game for himself. A couple of doubles, a two run homer. He started the home run barrage in the fifth inning. Back to back. To back to back, four straight. They hit eight bombs prior to the fifth inning, and that has never happened in Major League history until today. Two balls, one strike. Well, the Brewers have had to put on a movie like this in the past to go back. Years ago, Lyle Overbay was called upon in 2014 as Goodwin reaches on a walk. Right. What do you do if you're a position player getting ready to pitch? Well, for the answer to that, let's check in with Sophia. Well, you know, this isn't the move that manager Craig Council wanted to make, but Aaron Perez is always a gamer. He was ready to go. He came over to me and said, a big smile on his face, hey, are you ready? Indicated that uh, he was going to be coming in to pitch in this game. And so he spent some time actually talking with Chase Anderson. Manny Pena talked to him for a while as well. He did some stretching in here in the dugout. So uh, you know this isn't the move that Council wanted to make. But Perez, you know, he'll take advantage of this opportunity. Well, we have said this, and, you know, he, wherever you want to to play he will gladly do it he'll catch if it need be council really doing everything he can to avoid that and you don't want to do this there's a ground ball over to Aguilar the flip for one on to first not in time three to six and you know what you like I mean this is something that you, you don't normally see but I remember in the Cubs game when John Jay was out there the Cubs were getting beat Pretty good, and there was a lot of laughing and back slapping and having a good time in that Cubs dugout. You don't see any of that in that Brewers dugout. No. These guys are locked in. They realize that they have had a bad day at the plate, and there is no fun being had right now.
No, I would, you know, and this is a sport where it's pretty hard to be two up or two down, but love to see this team pop an attitude going into the weekend. There's a fly ball out to Eric Thames, and Hernan Perez records a scoreless inning. Well done, young man. Still 15 2 Nationals move to the night. Sports Wisconsin presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Let the games begin. Moves to the ninth inning, but let's get to our Badger Mutual plays of the game as the Nationals teed off at the expense of Michael Blazing. Back to back to back to back. Four straight and five out of six after they got a fly ball off the of Rendon Zimmerman. Where Rendon rather went deep after Murphy flied out. Five home runs in the fourth inning. In the third inning, I should say. And here are some of the numbers that the Nationals have put up. Four straight homers. That's actually happened with seven other teams. Six different players have gone deep. Two homer games here today for Harper and Zimmerman. That's in a nutshell is your story of this Thursday afternoon. New pitcher here looking to finish this one off is Max Albers. Yeah, pretty good numbers, right? I mean, Albers 37th appearance and 178 earned run average. Another guy with more strikeouts and innings pitched. Jesus Aguilar lifts a fly ball out toward Adam Lind, and he continues to squeeze everything hit his way. Let's check out what's on tap presented by Miller Lights. New day tomorrow, new series tomorrow as Jose Quintana and the Chicago Cubs come to town. This will be a good matchup. Quintana has given the Cubs staff a lift. Brent Suter has done likewise for the Brew Crew, and we'll get it rolling tomorrow at 6:30 here on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Suter very good. His last outing has been pretty good in the rotation. Yeah, a lot of off-speed stuff tomorrow at Miller Park. First pitch swinging Perez a roller to Defoe and there are two up two down in the ninth. And this is one you just. Wad up and throw in a trash. Yeah. Move on to tomorrow. Could have done that after the fourth inning. Uh huh. Had themselves a good series against the Cubs and. This one maybe gets forgotten sooner than later. That is Jonathan VR. Ronnie back in the lineup. Get Matt Garza healthy on the 10 day deal with the leg strain. Zach Davies, he was outstanding in this series opener, seven and two thirds. Brewers won the opener here on Tuesday night, eight to nothing. Isn't amazing how many runs he gets. It is. Zach Davies. 
I mean, as difficult as it's been for the Brewers to score on this road trip, they put up an eight spot in his start on Tuesday. Just incredible how the complexion of this series has turned. The R sends one down the line and left, and that'll carry foul. In one inning, they eighth did. inning yesterday. It was two to one Brewers going into the bottom of the eighth inning. Jimmy Nelson sailing along, and then a leadoff walk to Matt Weeders and exit Nelson. The bullpen had some bad luck, yes, and then some hard hit balls as well. And it all turned. Nationals winning last night and getting a blowout here this afternoon. And yet. They will be just one game out. The Cubs play the White Sox tonight. So at worst, a game and a half. At best, nothing changes. The White Sox can win. It's still just a half game. We are a soft liner to Rendon, and this game mercifully is over. Whatever could have gone wrong did for the Brewers this afternoon. And the Nationals show why they are a very, very dangerous team. In the National League moving forward. These two teams will meet again early September at Miller Park. It's over. Nats take two out of three as they win in very convincing fashion this afternoon. Let's send it to Jeff Grayson, ready to go in our Fox Sports Wisconsin studio.